is The Stuff of Legend. This is based off of a comic book series that I have not read, but I kind of want to because the premise of this is super cool. Let me, let me read this little preface for all of you. <clears throat> the year is 1944. A boy rests peacefully in his room with his loyal puppy Scout and his favorite toys. That's us. We are the boy's favorite toys. Heck yeah we are. <laughs> Suddenly the boy is snatched from his bed and dragged into his closet by the evil Boogeyman. Ooh. The devoted group of toys, led by the courageous toy soldier known as the Colonel, he's not in the game, but, but he's around, hmm. must stage a rescue mission. Despite their apprehension at what lies ahead, the toys venture into the Boogeyman's terrifying closet realm known as the Dark and find themselves in a world where they have become real, and as such, can be hurt. Oof. Oh no. They are thrust into a war against a vast army of the boys' discarded and disgruntled toys. The band must not only fight to rescue their boy, but also their very souls. <gasps> the, 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 the premise of the game is we are, we have followed the, the boogeyman through the portal in the closet, out to the dark, and now we are trying to figure out where he took the boy. He went through one of these four exits. They're these, uh, these plain black tokens. On the other side of each one of these tokens, and there's three more that are not currently in play. On the other side of each one of these is a number from one to seven. Under mm. normal circumstances, the highest number on the board is the one that we are trying to find. That's the one that the boogeyman took the boy through. Oh, he... If, however, the one and the seven are both on the board, the one is the correct exit instead. Make sense? Only if the seven only if is the, the seven, one. Only if the seven and the one are both on the board, the one is the correct exit. Otherwise, it's the highest number. Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are, uh, and there's three of them that are not on the board. Um, our objective if we are loyal to the boy, which we will get to in just a second. What does that mean? Uh, our objective is to figure out which, which exit the boogeyman took him through. But there are loyalty cards. It's a hidden, uh, hidden rolls game, too? It is a hidden roll game. It is a, it is a co-op game with an asterisk. There are two what? cards here. One says you are loyal to the boy. The other says you are loyal to the boogeyman. That's f***ed up. We take these two cards and we shuffle them up so nobody knows which is which. I'm gonna pass them over to Eric to continue shuffling them up so no, really nobody knows which There's one is which. There's only two. Yeah. One of these is going to the unused loyalty space. The other one is gonna get mixed in with three other loyalty cards. These are all loyal to the boy. One of them is, is, is has a special power, which we'll talk about in uh, a second. So, so there's a chance we're all, nobody is. There's the... a chance no one's the traitor, but it's a 50-50 chance. Oh, no! 50-50 chance one of us is loyal to the boogeyman. That's so I don't gonna, know if I can trust you guys. We're going to mix these up and, and pass them out. Uh, now, if you are loyal to the Boogeyman, you're obviously going to want to be covert about it. Uh, not only because that'll make your job to, to thwart the rest of us easier, but also because <clears throat> loyalty is not solid. It can be changed. What? Uh, the first way in which that can happen is the Boogeyman deck here. Boogeyman cards are just bad news. Okay. For for those of us that are loyal to the to the boy. They are just bad news all the time. Gotcha, gotcha. Some of these cards will make you mix up your current loyalty card with this one and then take one back. So you could swap with whatever this is. Gotcha. Uh, there's also some action cards, which I'm gonna deal out to everybody in a second. We're all gonna get seven of these to start with. Some of these action cards will give players the ability to play as an action. Give me your loyalty card. I get to look at them and then decide which one I'm keeping and give you the other one. And then your loyalty. And then loyalty is to the card. Is, or your loyalty is to, your is to your original. No, your loyalty objective. is to whatever your new card is Ooh. at that point. So loyalty is not totally solid. It's it's not. I don't think it's going to be super common that it'll be changing, but it could change. It so sounds we, like it could change a lot, though. Uh, but we don't have the choice. Not no, not we necessarily. Don't have no, you don't know. God is making us unless you're like checking to see. Yeah, unless you're. I mean, you can choose to switch with someone else. 
We're toys. God did make us. Right? right? Yeah, exactly. Man made us. Man made uh, us. So we're, okay, we're so, just, uh, we're pawns. yeah. Pawns but toys. at least three of us are loyal to the boy. Um, and we move, we the rule, boy. we rule by committee <laughs> to here. The to the boy. <laughs> we rule by committee here. This is us. We are the heroes. We move across this board as a group, always. We cannot s separate oh, from each other. Group? That's oh. our group. Interesting. Interesting. We move around the board together, and uh, uh, if at any point there's dissension, like we, we're, we're disagreeing about a decision, we take a vote. Civil majority rules on that vote, but if there's a tie, whoever gets dealt the Colonel's Air loyalty card here, you're going to reveal that immediately, so we will all know one person who is definitely loyal to the boy. You'll reveal that you're the Colonel's Air, you'll take this loyal to the boy card instead, and you will also get this gun. rifle token and Do the Colonel's rifle Do what I say! I got the card. gun! Uh, this, the Colonel's rifle, whoever holds that, breaks ties. But... <laughs> Just like the Vice up. President. Mm -hmm. But if you have to break a tie, you then pass the rifle to the player to the left. Is that why Cheney shot that old man mm. in the face and broke that tie? <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Yeah, in the Senate. <laughs> Politics! <laughs> it all makes sense uh, now. Wait, so you have to pass the gun to the person <clears throat> on the right? To, to the, left. the left. To the left. To when you, yeah, if you have to break a tie, then you pass the rifle to the player Meaning to the left. that the power of the colonel's chosen one goes to the other Moves person. Moves to the new person, What yeah. if you're loyal to the boogeyman and he passes it to the left? That seems like a bad thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. then that could happen. Don't yeah. do that. That can happen. Oh, man. There's also another ability Vice that you get as the colonel's heir, uh, or as the holder of the colonel's rifle, I should say. Uh, you have an ability where, as an action, you can immediately kill one of the boogeyman's troops who's within one space of us. If you use that action, you also pass the rifle to the player to your left. Okay. Um, the way that actions work... Uh, oh, so, the, the game takes place over there we take turns where we get a hero turn and then the enemies get a turn and we keep going back and forth until the end of the game the game ends when we decide to go to one of the exits and then we will find out if we're right or not or if the boy on the time track makes it all the way down to the boy is lost god oh. at, at that point the boogeyman wins but we lose hand size we do lose hand size as the time track goes down. I'll talk Ooh. about that in a minute. Ooh. Do we know? Uh, uh, do we know what happens to the boy if he's lost? No. Oh man, Boogeyman has him. I would assume eaten. <laughs> uh, so I mean, that's a good on question. our turn as as heroes, we get to take three actions, and we all collectively decide which three heroes take those actions. Um, and that's where voting will come into play oh, and three stuff. three heroes? Three heroes take an action every turn. However, once we've taken all three of our actions for the turn, those three heroes are going to go into the exhausted heroes pile, and then on our next turn, the odd man out will take the first action, because we don't get those back until all I, heroes that's have good. been That's played. good, because I was like, that's kind of messed up. Yeah, no, we can... Kind of messed up. Everybody will be taking action. The actions that are available to you when you get selected to take an action... You can, uh, you've got three choices. You can take a basic action, in which case you will choose one of the seven cards that will, we're all going to start with a hand of seven action cards, uh, and you will choose one of those action cards, it doesn't matter which one, to discard face down in this spot here. The discard pile is always face down, and we can never look through that. All of that stuff stays secret. Interesting. If you're taking a basic action, you'll discard a card face down, and then you can choose to either move or hide. If we move, it's a vote. You will nominate a space that is connected to the one we're on to move to. We'll vote on it. If the vote fails, we don't move and the action is forfeit. If the vote passes, then we move to the new space and we will reveal... Uh, the location cards on all, like, say we move here, we'll re reveal the location cards on all adjacent spaces that aren't already revealed. Son of a mm -hmm. Which okay. means, actually, that we're going to reveal these ones to start with uh, in just a second. We'll reveal them and resolve their text. We will then also reveal and resolve any encounter cards on the space that we've just moved to. Mm -hmm. Encounters, I don't, I'm not sure what all the location cards are. I haven't looked through them much. But the encounter cards, there's four possibilities on what type of encounter we could come across. Uh, if it's a troop encounter, we're adding new enemy troops to the board. Most likely like to the space we're on. I don't like that at yeah, all. Yeah, that's bad news for us. Uh, 
if it's a leader encounter, we're adding an enemy leader to the board. That's even worse. That is even worse, exactly. If it's an ally encounter, we're adding a friendly toy that mm. gives us a special ability that we can, it's a one-time use ability that we can mm. use to, to help us out in our, in our quest. Mm. Uh, there's also task encounters, and those will give us a, a certain objective that we have to reach, and if we do that, it'll give us a reward. I believe most, if not all, of those task rewards are somebody gets to peek at one of these four exit tokens. Mm. Very crucial that when you are peeking at an exit token, you make sure no one else sees it. Gotcha. If anybody sees an exit token that they're not supposed to, according to the rule book, we then shuffle it up with the three that are unused <gasps> and swap it. Mm. So that's just creating that's, chaos for everybody. That's, that's lots we of chaos. don't want that. Oh, we probably don't want we that. We don't want that. We so, probably uh, do don't everything want in your that. power not to see a token you're not supposed to see. Sure. We'll make sure that's just, just doesn't be like <laughs> if, <laughs> What did you get, Kyle? If you get the chance to peek at a token, you'll look at it, you'll put it back, and then you have to announce a number from one to seven. It doesn't have, you don't have to be honest about what number you're announcing, okay. but you have to announce something. Okay. Bear in mind that someone else could get the chance to peek at that same token later, and then they will know if you are lying. Okay, okay. Uh, Why would anybody lie? Exactly. Why would anybody lie? That's a weird thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, uh, that's peeking at the exit tokens, and that's how we will, that is how we will figure out how, where we're supposed to go, what our end objective is. Uh, I do not know if there are other ways to earn a chance to peek at those exit tokens aside from tasks. Maybe there's some location cards that do it. I don't believe there, I'm, I'm fairly certain there's no boogeyman cards or action cards that would let us do it. Uh, so that's kind of where the limitations lie. Or maybe there's some, uh, some player strengths. We all have some asymmetrical player powers, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so that's the move action. That's, that's one of the two basic actions you can take. The second one is the hide action. If you hide, we get to decrease the boogeyman's attention level. The boogeyman, this, this attention level meter, it's gonna start right here in the middle. That attention level meter is how, basically, how concerned is the boogeyman with the fact that we're chasing after him? Mm. He knows we're coming. How, how badly does that bother him, basically? The lower this is, the easier our job is. Nice. Because uh, the attention level, this top meter, determines how far away his troops notice us. So if the attention level is at two, all of these guys are going to be coming for us on their turn. Gotcha. If it's down at one, these guys don't care. Just these guys do. Mm. Mm. And it controls their health. It also controls troop strength, which is that bottom meter. Mm. So the lower this is, the easier it is to take these guys out. Gotcha. Oh, man. So we're going to be in a constant game of trying to push this down while stuff that we do that's accomplishing our objective is moving it back up. Oof. Oof. Uh, also of note, if we move along a these green lines here... Yeah, what are those? Those are quiet pads. That will automatically decrease the boogeyman's attention level by one. Ooh. These red dotted lines, those Ooh. are noisy pads. They will automatically increase the boogeyman's attention level. I don't like that. Oh, so those are a little bit more... Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, Very interesting. Uh, uh, you may also notice that there is no path on the board at the start of the game to get to the jungle. Um, I do now. Did, and two of that. the possible exits are in the jungle. Uh huh. That's because one of these ruined zoo location cards is going to add a rope bridge. And mm. that will be the only way into the jungle. I like it. Okay, so that's, those are the basic actions, are to move or to hide. The second option, if you are taking an action, is to play one of your action cards. Let's, I don't just, have uh, let's just pull one of these out as an example here. Let me zoom in on this. Uh, let me go up to my section of the table here. So, action cards uh, come, in, come in a couple different flavors. There's some that uh, will have text at the bottom. These are the type that you can play to say, I'm taking this action mm. specifically. Uh, there are also some that don't have any text at the bottom. Those are not used for this purpose. They are used for other things. 
uh, which I'll talk about in just a second. Mm. This icon here, if we see that, that means we immediately take a vote. And we are voting on whether we take the rest of this action or not. Um, if it passes, we move, we do. If it, if it fails, the action is forfeit. Uh, this one says we would get to move, ignoring one enemy in the space that we are in, per talk skill that is contributed to this action. There's there's three different one. yeah there's yeah, three two. three different uh, skill icons in the deck. There's going to be talk, fight, scout. There's also a yellow question mark that's wild that can be attributed mm. to any one of them. Um, what this is saying, under normal rules, we cannot leave a space that an enemy troop, is, or an enemy of any kind, is in the space with us. Mm. If, there, if there's a bad guy in the space with us, we can't leave. So, yeah. if you play this card, this lets us ignore troops with, or, or enemies within that space. Uh, per talk icon contributed to this action, and we get to reduce the attention level by one space. But in order for this action to succeed, we have to play enough talk icons on the action to meet or exceed the number of enemies that are in the space. So let's say, for example, there were three troops in the same space as us when I play this card. I don't have... Anytime I play a card, I get to contribute the two icons that are on my hero. Same, same with you guys. Ooh. You always get to contribute those to whatever action you're taking. Nice. I don't have any talk icons here, so I've only got one from this action card. I then can boost the action with other cards in my hand. Mm -hmm. So maybe I've got some cards that don't have any text on them, but they have some talk skills on them. Gotcha. I can boost my own action that way. I can also seek assistance from other players to contribute cards to the action. Gotcha. Uh, assistance... You can't just volunteer it and automatically play a card. You have to ask permission, and it has to be granted. Because some of these action cards are stained. Mm, that's part of my thing. Yes. Stained action cards are bad news for pretty much everybody. Uh, you will notice on your hero card, on the left side, you've got a, a power, some benefit, some something unique about your character that makes them stronger. And on the right side is a weakness. Now, my character's a bad example, because uh, it, it specifically says I can't play stained cards for my own actions. I can only use stained cards to assist others. Gotcha. You guys... Mine's a pretty good example. Every other, yeah, every other hero in the game has got some sort of a weakness that says when an action is stained, which is mm -hmm. basically if there is a stained card contributed to an action that you're taking then bad stuff happens. For Quackers, which is Paul's character, when an action of Quackers is stained, his trusting na nature betrays him. He must choose a leader, location, or encounter with a boogeyman effect within the attention radius, if there are any, and trigger its boogeyman effect immediately. Oh, God. So, yeah, when stained actions, bad news. Uh, so if we're doing that, we're doing it strategically. And maybe that means that we are... Or not. Maybe that means we're aware that we're going to suffer those consequences and we do it anyway. Maybe it means someone is not loyal to our team mm -hmm. and they are throwing a spanner in the works. So that's, uh, that's the gist of playing action cards. Um, we're all going to start with a hand of seven. And, uh, and yeah, uh, you'll, you should be able to tell if it's stained or not just based on the color. If it's black, that's a stained action card. If it's another color... It's not. Uh, the third and final option for when you are the one taking an action is to pass. You can just not take an action. Mm. But to do that, you gotta discard a card. So I don't know why you wouldn't at least hide. <laughs> unless unless our attention meter's all the way down at the bottom Wait, or what's something. Hide? I don't remember you saying hide. It lowers, hide. It lowers, lowers the attention level. So you can not That's play a, a card and you can just say hide and then that lowers the attention level. You still have to play a card. You still have to discard a card. Gotcha. But those can be stained cards. Those can be any cards. Right. You discard them face down. That doesn't matter. Uh, that's a basic action. Hide and move. Those are the maybe two you don't want to. Yeah, maybe you don't want to lower. Maybe you want everybody to know that you're the traitor. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so those are the three options uh, for our actions. Once we have taken our three actions, we will exhaust 
all three of those heroes that have been played. We will move on to the enemy phase, where enemies that are within the attention level radius will activate. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that they will move one space toward us. We get to dis decide collectively as a group what order they move in and um, what path they take toward us, but they have to be moving closer to us when they move. Uh, if they are already on a space <laughs> with us, when they activate, then they attack us and they deal us a wound. Mm. When they deal us a wound, we will advance this wound tracker one space uh, these mean that somebody has to discard a card, or two cards, or three cards from their hand. Ooh, the wounds. And these three spaces mean you have to flip the Boogeyman coin. The Boogeyman coin is bad news. Oh, man. This thing, if it lands on the Boogeyman face, uh, which says, it's hard to see it. Revenge. It's not painted, but it says revenge, and, uh, has a, has a picture of the Boogeyman's face. If it lands on that... Somebody's got to draw and resolve a boogeyman card. No! Like I said, those no! are bad. No! We could just not do that. If it oh, lands on the boy face, which says loyalty, that's almost worse, because that's advancing the time track. Oh. And as Dustin pointed out, as this gets further along, it will decrease our hand size. That does not mean you have to discard cards if you're above the limit at that point, but it does mean that mm. when you draw up new cards, you'll draw less. Nothing. And that brings me to one last topic, which is, if you run out of cards, you immediately flip the boogeyman coin, resolve its effects, and then draw up your new hand. Ah, so that's how we get new cards. Yes. That is how we get new that's cards. That's the only way to get it's new cards. It's the only way to get new cards. It's to flip boogeyman? Oh my yep. god. Uh, so this initial deal matters a lot. And if this wound wow. tracker gets all the way to the end, it just resets and goes back to the beginning and it Ow. keeps cycling through. Okay. Hmm. Wait. But that's the reason that we keep this coin on top of the action deck, is to remind us that if we need to draw cards from here, we gotta flip that coin first. That's the only way to get... Only way to get new cards. Wow. Man, this boogeyman really f***ed up everything. Yeah. Me? Yeah, I don't like this boogeyman. So, yeah. that is the gist. Hey, thanks for hanging out. If you want to spend more time with us, do us a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most importantly, head on over to twitch.tv slash bnbtabletop and give us a follow there. We play board games live every Sunday night at 5 p.m. Pacific time on a show we call The Board and Barrel. And we like to keep things interactive. You guys can influence what happens throughout the course of a game with our buff and nerf house rules. You can also make predictions on how things are going to pan out, play virtual bingo for a chance to win a free board game of your own, and heckle us and stuff from the chat. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you Sunday night.